Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here's another episode of the weekly market analysis session. We do this every weekend, look at the markets to say the direction of the, the markets for a new trading week. We also look at what has happened the previous week, where we are presently in the markets. Uh, we usually start with the dollar index. This is dollar index weekly charts. From this, we saw that uh, it's very obvious, it's clear here that the, uh, the dollar index went higher, uh, went higher, but finally closed uh, bearishly. It actually got to my objectives for last week and then uh, closed bearishly. So let's look at it, how it went. Uh, Day by day, this was Monday. So this order we were on Friday, previous uh, week, weekend. And I told us that uh, we're going to have an upward movement. I be ready to clear this high and also this high and hook into this field of inefficiency. You can see that it entered there slightly. The high of this can be is at um, 104 uh, 42. The high of this candle is only for 45, so by uh, three pips, all right? So it went up, up by three pips of this high and give up, give up the ghost. We had um, Tuesday made a lower low, lower high compared to Monday's high, and then so then Wednesday, where the bullish movement on Thursday, and then the bearish movement on Friday. So it was basically a consolidation with but apparently the, the move took place in the first uh, two days of um, the week monday and tuesday we had that bullish movement monday all right clearing now the uh, our objectives for the week because i wanted us to trade into that level and did that on monday and afterwards we consolidated all three okay we have this volume imbalance, so price came to the test it separately, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So what do we expect since this has happened? We look at the weekly time frame. I, essentially, I see favor the upward movements, okay? I see favor uh, that we're going to do higher. But um, um, the bearish stance, you might want to trade to the high. Let me just put it there. The high of the scam because there's a little inefficiency. Okay, between the low of last week and the high of three weeks ago, we have a little space where only buy side was offered, so we've not had any sell side offer. So you might want to see a retest to that high. Okay, so that's a bearish. Well, now we have looking at the the daily time frame there is a bullish order block here. This last up close candle is a bullish order block. So um, essentially, it could also trade up to the open of that bullish order block. So we have something of this nature. Okay. If we test it, if it does this Monday, Tuesday, up to Wednesday, get to this, but if it gets to this level Monday up to Wednesday, then we will have a um, very bullish movement effort. So if you trace to this level, I'll buy it, uh, targeting the inefficiency around this area. So it's going to clear uh, what looks like uh, an equal high okay, for the two top. Um, the high here and the high here. High, so these equal highs. If we have liquidity resting above them and have inefficiency above them. So this um you could just trade up here, pay more orders for long and then go higher. So that's what I'm looking at. I need to trade up at least get to the high of this initial block and then see if we dip into the open and then finally move higher. So sweep liquidity resting above this and ultimately see if I'm feeling this area of inefficiency. That's what I'm looking at for of the dollar index. This bearish candle, I don't want to see price trade below. If it trades below it, then we're going to be targeting a bit of the rest in here. 
I don't see that in the cards. I, I see a bullish movement for the dollar index. That's what I see. This is market maker sell model, and our target is to take out this high. All right. But for now, low hanging fruit is to trade above these equal highs and then put its head close to the fifty percent of this inefficiency. Well, at least I want to see book up book this time. That's my prognostication going to next week. So we want to see a bullish number of robots. We permit that if we go bearishly up to this level, even those uh so the downside objective for dollar index is to trade to this level before it goes higher. We have a four hour bullish order block as well, and also a breaker because this is a low, a high, a lower low that is broken to the upside. So this last up close candle before this downward is the bullish data block. So we have a lot of conferences around there. So this is the area, this zone. I'm looking at price to trade into this zone before an upward movement on the dollar index. So we are uh, opening bullish for the dollar index. We have the bearish order block here open. So that could be another point of call for the we don't need all these now. Take it off. It's here. All right, that's there. This has been as fulfilled as objective, so we should take it off. So essentially, this thing right here. The opening price of that. Here. Good. And without some time. All right, I'm expecting price to trade up to that level for next, for next week. All right, by Friday next week, I want to see how we trade to that level. Okay, so that's about, <clears throat> that's about that. Now, if we have a bullish um, expectation for the dollar, then our euro USD will be bearish. But we'll look at what, what will happen uh, next week. Let's look at what, ha what happened last week. So I expected that we're going to stay this low. Uh, did we do that? Um, that is the low of the scandal comes in at um, 0.72331. The high and the low here 0.7222. Good. So it went. Uh, yes, it went. Um, yes, about nine pips. They're about lower than this this low here. Okay. So is it up to nine pips? One, no, nine points, nine points. We went nine points below. So yes, it actually swept the low because if the stop loss is resting here, this movement down would have actually taken it out. So yes, it actually did that, but not in a convincing manner. So relatively equal lows, just as we saw in the dollar index right here. You see relatively equal highs. So uh, what I'm expecting. I'm expecting okay, that's for weekly time frame. Uh, let's look at it here. Yeah. This high, this high, and this high basically equal. So, I want to see a movement higher. Um, same thing, I want to see movement lower. Uh, it has actually poked into this bullish order block uh, the second time. Well, that's not what I'm, 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 I'm looking at it. You know, go down, take out this low convincingly, and then disregard the effect of this support. To go here, that's what I'm looking at. So, if we have an upward movement for the dollar index, then we expect that the, the euro is going to go lower, clear these lows convincingly, and see how to trade to this low. So, let me put a mark and see if it has been to trade to this low. Let's put it there. So, that is that's my anticipation going into, into next week. And especially going into the next week. Uh, then for daily time frame, so we had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This is Sunday standard, so we don't we're not looking at that. So I expected that it's going to take out this low. It did that just by some pips and uh, some points rather. So I am not really convinced. It could trade up to this very shorter block and then ultimately give up the ghost. And trade lower, trade lower, sweeping this um, equal lows, and also taking a liquidity resting below these 
to all those as well. That's what I'm looking at going into uh, next week. All right, from Monday, I want to see it trade uh, bearishly. On four hours time frame, this bullish other block, which also acts as a bearish breaker block, is another area I'm looking at uh, the price. I'm, I actually expected this trade to pan out on Thursday and Friday, but it didn't get there. Uh, fell short of it. I think we tested it. Did it? Let me see. Yes, it did. And then give up the goal. So it could sweep it, sweep the high one more time. And finally, go lower. This area should be left uh, untouched. Okay. This area should be left untouched. It should trade off of this bearish breakup block and then give up the goals. Take out the uh, the load on. Uh, the lows, the liquidity resting below these lows that happened last week, and then not maybe go uh, to these uh, objectives. So that's what I'm looking at for Euro US. So we are bearish, uh, bullish uh, movements can go up to this level. So a bullish movement can go up to this and daily time frame, uh, which is also like the main threshold of the. Uh, the bearish breakup block. So I think that's the area we're looking at. If it's going to go bullishly it's to that level and then to give up the cost to trade lower. That's for for Euro USD. For GBP USD, what are we expecting? Let's talk about uh, the photos I have here. Some session indicators. So let me take them out. Okay. So, what are we expecting? Weekly time frame. So, weekly time frame, I actually wanted, what is this? So, I actually wanted a bearish movement down to switch these goals. It didn't. You look at it very well. You see that this low is lower than this low. And of course, uh, to be very short. Sure. Yeah, I said I didn't trade to it, meaning that this new week we're entering, all the supplies gravitate lower. I told us that uh, this has been held into a tight range of consolidation because the line index has not uh, moved uh, significantly higher or lower. That's why we're having this tight trend. And because it wants to maintain, it wants to leave this higher and touch, okay? Otherwise, it would have actually pierced higher. Uh, for daily time frame, so this is Sunday last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I'm essentially trading within this range. I want to see give up the ghosts. Okay, what's my bullish movement? It will trade up to the open of this bearish order block. That is the level, the highest level I want to see price get to before it gives up the ghost to trade lower. Four hours time frame, we have a breakup block here as well, okay? So if we look through up to this point, we shouldn't close above it for we to first to stand uh, continue our bullish movement for the uh, uh, for the GBP USD. But maybe I expect price to sweep these four lows and then trade to trade uh, to this bearish for this bullish order block. That's what I'm looking at. If this gives up the ghost, then we have inefficiencies that we're feeling, and also we need to get these lows. Okay, so that's about that's about that. Um, the next is the Aussie. So the AUD USD weekly time frame, the expected price to go bearish. Um, it did. Back again, I was looking at this low, it didn't get there. It actually stayed. Also, because dollar didn't move significantly, we wanted it. So it's also uh, consolidated around here uh, last week. So we had um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So still consolidation within this trading range inside this bullish order block. So I want to see it sweep it and then killing this area of inefficiency. That's my target for next week. That's my target from Monday to Friday. I want to see that objective being fulfilled. Um, bullish movement should be this bearish or that block as well. That's uh, 
I also look at the I think we don't need to send the human savings uh, to what we have right now. So that's what I'm looking at to trade lower is an objective for for AUD USD. So if we clear this um, equal highs into let me see that this level here. So that's two. Just that's fifty percent of that range. Okay. So this this level. Get back to it, or if you measure the high to the low around the sixty-two percent adjustment level, and then send price lower. Okay, this high amount shouldn't you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Wow, the lower uh, objective is this uh, this area right here. Let me see price grow lower. And then next is the the key the NZD USD. So for the NZD USD, we actually wanted. Uh, a bearish movement, but it went higher. Use of um, it just kept going higher. This was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't know why this happened like this because the brother didn't do the same. These are correlated curves, right? They're positively correlated. Uh, so what we are seeing here, we may want to test this. Um, let me extend it out. I can see here. We want to fill in that area of inefficiency for finally giving up the ghost to go So if you clear this highs and then starts going below, I don't see trading up to take out this high. That's not the cards for now. Just a little retracement up to this level and then it will go down. So if that money to a bullish movement, I want to see from top when when is it that I want to see price trading lower uh, to take out the last week's uh, low. Four hours time for you. Let's see what we have there. Green highs, okay. Very short up low. Bit of liquidity, uh, inefficiency rather. So that could be uh, that's a catalyst to send price higher to that level and then before we start trading lower. Uh, for USD card, USD card, we took out that high on this box. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Good. So Monday and Tuesday took out that high. I expected it to go higher. It didn't. Because dollar also started going down. That's why right. this also started going down. So it has given this false narrative that this is a resistant level. And so traders might uh, be caught into the dark trap to think that this is resistance. And my price cannot go higher. And then we we'll see this new coming in. A bullish movement going higher, trying out all the liquidities here and then into this also in this level. So we are still bullish on this. Um, this pair, what changes are tone for this pair is when okay, this low, if you close below this low, which is essentially this low, so if you trade lower and close below this low, then we want to uh come back with this in bullish or that low. I'm not going to take that I don't see that. Uh, Playing out, and I expect that price will go higher. Superability will be an uncertain level because structures will go on bullishly, and we are looking at uh, uh, upward movements in, uh, in consonance with uh, what the dollar is doing to go higher. That's my anticipation for USD card. Uh, the next is USD CHF. So we expected bullish movement, we actually got it. We took out that high that I outlined uh, last week. Swept it so this is um Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday. So as we move higher from Monday, kept going higher, swept the liquidity, liquidity here. The next point of call is this. But we could we test this high, it's essentially at that level. So we want to take out um basically call this here yeah, into this area of inefficiency before it goes higher. But ultimately, at the end of uh, next week, I want to see it. Close or at least hook it head above this high. That's what I'm looking at for this pair. That's what I'm looking at for this pair. So we are bullish on um, USD CHF. You see, it's been going higher. Uh, there's no necessity for it to come back to the lower again. All right. There's no necessity for that. And you see upward movement. Play around here. 
but ultimately I will see a person who can take an adverse act. Let's see if it has willingness to get into this area of limitations. All right, for the USDJPY, still going higher gradually, but ultimately I know that we're going to get to this level. Only before the end of the first quarter, uh, this is where I'm targeting. This is where I'm actually targeting. In the liquid time frame, my anticipation was that it's going to sweep this high. It didn't, it went close to it, but didn't take it out. Uh, I want to see a push. I want to see a push. Uh, yes, to it. Let's see a push. Yes, to it. So if you take out the trades lower and takes out this low, then my bullish movement will be uh, paused. It will be placed on pocket and hold. I will not near turn and pause. Then another thing, but for now, I assess that higher prices on this map because that's where my focus my focus is on this area. We have been looking at that area for, uh, for months now. This area. Let's change the color. Red. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. All right, on seats to this side. So this area, so like if, if, if we are still bullish on this spot, we could trade lower, find some support on this uh, red candle, this bearish candle, and rally higher. That's uh, that's permissible. So we are bullish on this spot. Bullish on this spot. So we could trade lower, find some support here, and still move higher. That's okay. Uh, for our indices, I told us that we shouldn't fight the bullish movement. I told us, if you remember last week and two weeks ago, I did plan on saying that there is no support as it is right now. This all time high, we, we will fight what is happening. So it's, we just allow it to do its thing until we see it come up the bus. And for now, it's bullish all the way. It's bullish all the way. So we're bullish on this pair. We're bullish on this pair. Those of you that have been riding this thing uh, since um, since um, October last year, you have serious profit right now. It's serious profit right now. So it's still bullish. And we continue our bullish stand for this bear until any form of a reversal. For now, we can pick the top until we see what market offers. So we are bullish until the last program uh, run. Okay, same thing for. Uh, US 100, which is a NASDAQ industrial average. So, we're going sorry, NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100, not NASDAQ industrial average. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, we're still bullish on this pair as well. Uh, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, bullish in higher. Same thing, uh, we okay, not uh. Now, Jones Industrial, which as you have said, we had a, a, something of bearish close last week, but I don't, um, I don't see this um, as the, the, the top. No, I don't see this as, as the top. Until we have significant movement lower, so once bearish candles are diluted to the downside, consistent at least for two or three times, and I can say, okay, uh, reverse uh, has taken place. I still maintain that bearish. This will just consolidate here and then give room for these other ones to rally as well. Uh, for gold, trading within this range, there was that the dollar makes a significant movement, we just consolidate within this range. Like it was that last week. Nothing spectacular about gold. Uh, but just within the range. Okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So nothing happened except a day trader. To find some moves but for swing traders and short term traders, nothing here is uh, noteworthy. Nothing is noteworthy here. Nothing is noteworthy. So essentially, we are still here. So we're still here. Once it trades below this area that I've marked out, then yes, otherwise, we have equal highs here that I guess can trade to. It has made this all time high uh, last year, December. 
um, I only I did I want to go over that. But right now, this is of course the first product we had. We expect that there is something of transformation. It is typically what uh, you usually see around the first product of the year. So uh, just be careful and if you do your that is scalping and day trading for now until you enter in a much more trending environment. Last one on our list is a key point. I told us that once we find support here, we are going to move higher to this level and um, see what happened last week. We see how price uh, when we pull you the moment we found some uh, support here. I told us once we close in this inefficiency, I want to see price go higher to this level and see how it laid out beautifully. So last week was all foolish. We had Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Sunday, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, let me see. It is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So this is where we are right now. Okay. Remember that uh, this country is only Saturday and Sundays. Saturdays, not Sunday, Saturdays. I don't think it closes on Sunday. What it is this? I told you that Sunday is not Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Okay. okay so we've been bullish all through. From Monday up to this Sunday, it's been bullish. Where are we heading to? We are heading to this. Yes, to this level. We have some kind of consolidation here before we start going bearish, before going lower. So that is it for analysis for this week. So what are we expecting in summary? Expect that the dollar index is going to uh, find some support here and rally higher. That's what we're looking at. So any bearish movement is going to get to this level, find some support and then go higher. Or you, you, as you expect that any bullish movement is going to go up to this level, find some support and extend it out. And then go lower. We are targeting this area. Yeah, for GPP, USD, our support level is here, our resistance, rather, find some resistance here and then go lower. Keep all lows and the chances. We have done that objective. The upside is to get to this level, not to be bearish about that, and then move in the way. The Aussie, we say that it's going to go and you can get up to this point as well. This open of this bearish about that, and then find go low. So it's going to find some kind of resistance there, and then go lower. And then you will see, um, please, area of inefficiency, book its head up to this. Uh, very sure that we here and then spike lower. USD card trade within this range and then spike. No, come on, it's not going to take out this low. It's going to consolidate and then sometimes higher. Uh, USD CHF, if we come back uh, and we have proportion block, we have the old high, and that's essentially like this. So if we just come and uh, some support around the opening price of this proportion block, it has some price higher. I don't want to see trade below this way. That's not so that I can do. Then for uh, USD trade, like I said, we are eyeballing this area, but I should trade at low price. If we find some support around this, uh, it will be sure that we have the same price. Uh, for our indices, uh, SP500, uh, NASDAQ, and uh, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, we are still bullish. We are still bullish. Okay. We don't want to pick the top of this pair because uh, there's no, uh, it's not actually good to pick the top. We want to pick the top in the bullish market. The alarm market to do its bullish movement before, uh, once it starts, it keeps the signal, it starts breaking structure from lower time frame down to higher time frame. Up to higher time frame, we are not so okay. We exchange trend, but for now, the trend is your friend, it's bullish. Uh, it's 500, NASDAQ, and uh, bullish one. Bullish markets. Growth uh, is consolidating. Most significant uh, price movement right now. Um, if you trace below this um, area that I marked out, then we will go lower. Targeting, targeting this low, this low again, essentially into this um, 
equity of the efficiency for Bitcoin. So that's like we are bullish and bullish up to once we get to this level, then I'll see what the market goes and then give us a new form of level from that point. But for now, we get to that level. Okay, and that's our anticipation for all the pairs we are looking at. So like I usually say, um, try and trade with low leverage, don't over risk. Uh, the market is not your own, so trade with caution. Yeah, it's a, a thing that we just we can analyze and if it's going to go that way, then ultimately it must be then no. Uh, the, these are uh, the, we anticipate, we forecast based on technical analysis that the market presents to us and then trade when the probabilities are high in our favor. So always uh, trade with stop losses. Don't ever trade without stop loss. I'll talk to you guys next week, same time. Um, if you have any questions, please you can send directly to me, um, uh, my video, my YouTube channel. I will um, respond. All right, from here, from me, it's okay.